Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to take you through the new HADR deployment uh, that became available in the 1.4 release. So for starters I wanted to kind of level set as I've done in other recordings and uh, explain my environment. I've got a set of Power8 machines. I've got two configured in a primary site. You see those are up, button, up on the top left. Uh, one on the secondary side. I am playing with single HMCs even though we recommend dual HMCs. And I've got block level replication between uh, a pair of storewise enclosures. Now I have done some pre-steps as far as getting this deployment in place. So what I wanted to take you through is the new way to configure uh, the cases cluster via the uh, user interface. So the steps that I've already taken, I've already installed my cases LPAR. He does happen to reside on the secondary site. And what I'll do is I'll show you just the piece where I configure the actual UI server. And then from there, I'll go into the UI server and I'll go through the entire configuration. Um, so it's effectively going to be acting as the cases that initiates all of the operations. And it's going to give me the graphical user interface uh, point of control as well as, well as CLI based control. Uh, so you see the cases LPAR up there. I've already patched up my VIO servers for the HADR configuration. They need to be running 311, and there is a required eFix that they recommend. So I've got that in place across my six VIO servers. On the storage enclosures themselves, I created a separate user ID. I happen to call mine cases admin, and I've already pre set up the uh, SSH keys so that the cases can communicate with both of the storage enclosures. Um, I do have a new requirement for this new HADR topology where two 10 gig LUNs need to be mapped to all the participating VL servers at the primary site. Um, so if I load up the picture again, I did go ahead and map two 10 gig disks to the four VL servers that were participating. If I had more systems that were going to participate in this configuration, um, all the VL servers on that primary site would need to basically have visibility to those same two disks. Um, the other piece that I've done um, is I had the zoning already propagated between the two physical locations. Um, so I've got the zoning on site one and then I manually went ahead and I propagated the zoning over to site two. I copied it over so that the uh, primary and secondary worldwide port numbers exist at the second location. Um, I did go ahead and define source and target relationships for my storage subsystems and I established the replication. Um, so if you look, um, the LUNs that I have painted that are colored in the middle of the screen are not reflective of all the disks that are involved. Uh, but just to kind of show you, I did go ahead and set up those uh, relationships. I initiated the copies behind the scenes, let it complete. And then I deleted the consistency group that I had put in place because my cases, when he goes through the configuration, is going to create his own consistency group. So I already took care of that piece. And then uh, I want to go ahead and leverage the DR rehearsal feature that's available in the product. Um, so I went ahead and I set up yet another set of disks at the remote location. I happen to have a V9000 on my DR site. Um, so I went ahead and beyond those target LUNs on the right hand side, I went ahead and set up some flash copy targets. So when I, when I initiate that DR rehearsal operation, it'll automatically flash and it'll create clones using those disks. Um, if you look behind the scenes, if I were to look within uh, the V9000, um, I called all of my third copy LUNs DR test LUNs, and you see that I have my boot volumes, my data LUNs, and then I have some that were actual uh, shared disks for the clusters that I have in place for my SAP HANA instances. None of those LUNs are mapped to any host. So if you look on the right hand side, they're not assigned to anything. Um, and then the last piece that I did, I set up those relationships between the second target copy and the third flash copy volumes. So for all my boot disks from the cases admin, I did execute an SSH operation uh, as admin to my V9000 enclosure. And I went ahead and I set up relationships for those disks from the aux LUNs, which were my targets, over to the DR test LUNs that I showed you in the previous uh, animation. And then I did so for uh, the data volumes as well as the corresponding uh, shared disks that my uh, HANA clusters were actually using. And then uh, my S4 uh, application server instances, I went ahead and I took care of that for those disks as well. So I've already done all that piece. Now let me go ahead and switch gears go into the actual uh, uh, cases controller and I'll show you how easy it is to go ahead and install uh, the, the UI server, launch it, and we'll go through the configuration. All right, and so here we are now inside of the actual cases controller. I've gone ahead and I've already installed all of the packages. 
So if I do an LSLPP minus L on cases, that asterisk, you'll see that everything that was in my particular directory, I did go ahead and install. Um, and the key pieces that I've got the cases UI server package installed. Uh, again, I just went ahead and took everything. During the actual installation, what went ahead and happened is it gave me a script to run that would download any additional packages needed uh, or RPMs. Um, if I just kind of give you a quick glance as to what that looks like, uh, do a search, MRUI, and if I just kind of back up, what you'll see during the actual installation, what you would have seen is this particular message right here. It tells you that to go ahead and uh, get things going, you can go ahead and get the remaining packages by running this uh, UI installation script. So as soon as the install completes of the packages, I can go ahead and exit out. If I run this particular guy, and it's already been run, he should not be finding anything new, but he's gonna go ahead and check for any particular uh, prerequisites. Um, my UI server was actually actively running before, so he's stopping it, checking the packages, and as soon as he completes, what he'll do is he'll give me the actual port that I'm going to use to connect to on my browser, and from there we can go ahead and proceed with the actual cluster configuration. And there you go. Now you've got the actual connection point, and when I go ahead and pull this up on my browser, what you'll see is I'll have a vanilla configuration, no cases cluster in place. We'll go through the actual configuration uh, through the UI server. All right, so if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see that I'm connected to that IP address, and that's already got the port pre-filled, so it's the ID that I got earlier. I've already got my uh, root user ID and password. So if I go ahead and I log into the UI server, you'll see that when I go into it for the first time, there's absolutely nothing there. So I can go ahead and start creating the cases. And my cases, uh, my browser already stored some of the previous definitions that I had in there. So you'll see that it's ATSSG199 uh, with the corresponding domain. And then this is where we kind of start getting into the uh, specifics. I have three different potential topologies. I'm gonna go ahead and define an HADR topology for this particular one. And I want to call my cluster HANA VMR HADR. I've been flipping back and forth between a DR cases configuration and an HADR one. So let's go ahead and do that and proceed. And now that that piece completed, uh, if you take a look, it's prompting me to add the actual site names. I've been keeping mine simple and just calling them primary and secondary. Your mileage may vary, call them as you will. And I am configured for synchronous replication. This is where you can actually take the default of async. I happen to be defined in synchronous mode. And if you were using a type of uh, hyperswap deployment or some type of uh, storage virtualization configuration, you could go ahead and set the type to shared. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to sync because I am actually using replication and then proceed. Okay, so if I now come in and I start defining the actual storage controllers, I can define one for site one, one for site two. So let me go ahead and do that. I can go ahead and start adding the storage controller for the primary site. It's G7. Um, I do have support for a number of different vendors. So I've got DS8000, um, EMC storage using SRDF replication, Hitachi, the Storewise family, which would fall under the SVC, and then as well as XIV. I do happen to be playing with Storewise enclosures in my environment. And if I come in um, from the dashboard within the GUI, I went ahead and I snagged the actual cluster ID of that enclosure. And I mentioned earlier on that I had created a specific cases admin user. I happen to call mine master SVC. Let me go ahead and add him. And once he actually uh, handshakes, he'll go ahead and add it. Let me go ahead and add the second one as well in just a second. And same methodology. ATSSG, this one is 200. He is part of the Storewise family. And for his cluster ID, it is slightly different. Let me go ahead and get him in there. And I also created a cases admin ID as well. This one I call master v9000. I'll go ahead and add him and we'll go ahead and continue. And now if we go ahead and save and proceed.
and now we can get into actually defining the HMCs. Um, I happen to have one on either side, so if I come in and I start defining my IP addresses or names, ATS SG16, this is for my primary site, and I guess I could leave him as is. And let's go ahead and add the primary HMC. And then we'll add at least one for site two, even though we recommend dual HMCs. And proceed. I'm going to go ahead and save it and proceed. And now you'll see that when I get into the create host group configuration, this is where I start to get the flow a little bit different than when I showed it in the past, showing it um, defining the environment via CLI. So I'm going to go ahead and call my host group HANA VMR HG. And this is one of the new features in the 1.4 release. You see the host pairing type. I can go to uh, with the one-to-one -one pairing like I could in the previous releases. I'm going to go ahead and do an asymmetrical host group, which basically allows me to have multiple hosts on one side and then potentially go into a single host on the other one. So because I'm going to have an irregular uh, set of pairings, I'm going to do an M to N. And then you can go ahead and customize the policies if you'd like. Uh, you can see how you've got host failure detection rate defaults. You can slow it down or speed it up. Uh, you can go ahead and enable the monitoring um, and then do some of the flex capacity tuning. I'm going to take pretty much the default stuff in my environment and we'll go ahead and proceed. And you'll see that here it's actually tabbed. So it's asking me for a host group name and then I'll go through all of the additional tabs up on the very top. So let's go ahead and save and go on. And now what you'll see in the Add Host tab is that for my primary site, the HMC that I registered went ahead and automatically displayed all of the hosts that are being managed by that HMC. Now, I don't want my cases to go ahead and touch all of them. I'm only going to be playing with the S822s in the environment. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one and the bottom one. And I mentioned that I had an asymmetric host group definition. So I'm going to have two on the left hand side in the primary site. And then I'm going to go to a corresponding S822 on the uh, secondary backup site. So we'll go ahead and save. And actually, before I do that, let me expand this. And this is where you can go ahead and enable some of the settings like HA monitoring and then play around with some of the tunable speeds. I'll just take the defaults across the board and continue. And then what you're going to see is that because this is an HADR cases, um, he's going to go ahead and recognize the VIO servers that are residing on the primary site. Why that matters is when you have an HA type or an HADR type cases, um, he's going to go ahead and form a shared storage pool cluster with all the participating VIO servers. So I'm going to go ahead and take the pair on the first SA22 and then the second pair on the other SA22 at the primary location. So I didn't have to key any of these names in. He just went ahead and discovered everything. And now that he went ahead and did a probe and discovery of the environment, um, he did go ahead and detect that I have the two 10 gig LUNs that I mentioned were a requirement and that I had already pre-allocated to the uh, VIO servers. So he sees that there is an HDISC1 and an HDISC2 available. I'm going to go ahead and select these two guys since I know I need two disks. And then it's going to ask me, do you want to set this up as the repository disk or the HA disk? I know I need one of each. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll proceed. And now that I selected the two disks, um, notice that my HA monitoring is disabled. Um, I don't have the VM agents installed inside of the individual VMs. I can come in and do that after the fact. Um, so one of the nice things about doing the deploy via the GUI is that it automatically went ahead and detected all of the LPARs or VMs in that particular uh, environment. I can go ahead and select all of them. Um, but I know for a fact that I do not want to manage this ATSSG 189. So it went ahead and selected all of them. If I wanted to play around with any of the policies for my uh, VMs, 
um, and I had the agent installed, I could go ahead and start tweaking some of the speeds at, at which it was doing the actual VM monitoring. I'm going to go ahead and do that later. So let me go ahead and proceed. And then now it's just basically giving me a summary. I can go ahead and export this summary, but what you'll see, it's got all of the basic details. So the name, that the fact that it's an asymmetric host group. Um, I didn't tweak any of the uh, flexible CPU and memory values, so I just took the defaults. Uh, but it does have the various hosts that are involved, the VIO servers, the disks that are that are going to be used, one as an HA disk, one as a repository disk, the different VMs that it's going to go ahead and manage. And then I'll just basically go ahead and submit uh, and have the deployment uh, go ahead and take place behind the scenes. This does take a little bit of time, so I'll probably speed up the recording, and then I'll show you what the dashboard actually looks like. All right, so now that the dashboard actually went ahead and loaded, what you'll see is that I'm currently clicked on to the actual cases, uh, which I had previously called HANA VMR HADR. Uh, but what's new here in this HADR type cases is you see how I have now tabs in the center of the screen. So I have a DR tab and I've got an HA tab. And if I kind of start expanding things and clicking on some of the actual attributes, uh, if I click on the site name and I'm under the DR tab, you'll see I have the ability to perform plan moves. Um, I can perform the DR testing operation like I've demonstrated in previous recordings. And then I can also start kind of looking a little bit deeper. I get the same functionality at the host group level. If I expand my host group, you'll see the actual two hosts that correspond to the host group on the primary site. Um, if I go ahead and start opening this up even further, I would see the managed VIO servers, VIO servers which I had previously selected, but some of the cool things in the version 1.4. If I start expanding, I now see only the managed VMs in their section. I can now filter through them. So if I was looking for a specific VM, and then if I didn't just want to see the managed ones, if I wanted to take a peek at the unmanaged ones, which in my environment I only had one, I can see those guys now kind of side by side. Um, what's also different is if I go ahead and I select um, one of the hosts, but because this is an HADR configuration, I click on the HA tab, I now get operations like the LPM host evacuation, um, where all of the managed VMs, I could go ahead and say, go ahead and push them out and have them fan out across my other servers within my host group. Um, the other thing that I could do is if I go back to the managed VMs and I select one of those particular guys, I'm under the HA tab, I've got the LPM capabilities, I've got the restart capabilities, and then if I start kind of poking through, and I just happen to select one of the individual VMs, and I go under the actual policies, from here, I can start doing things like enabling the HA monitoring. Now for me to go ahead and enable this, it would require me to go ahead and install the agent inside of the VM, and then come in and set this guy to enabled, update my policy, and then rerun a, a verify and discovery operation, which would take probably a little bit. Um, I'd want to probably go ahead and install the agent on all the other VMs, make sure that that HA monitoring is actually enabled, update the policies, and go ahead and proceed. Uh, but I've demonstrated some of these particular components in the previous uh, recordings. You can play around with the failover priorities. By default, everything is set to medium. But then now, as far as the uh, capabilities that you got with HA clusters versus DR clusters, you have the concept of an actual home host. I can go ahead and tweak this guy. So when I move all of my VMs from one side to the other side or within the primary site, I can always say revert everything back to the way that it was. So the VMs would return to whatever I had preset as that actual home host. Um, so I just kind of wanted to give you a sense. Doing the deploy via the graphical user interface, which was not available in the previous releases, is kind of a nice to have. You saw how easy it was to go ahead and do the select all and how to see uh, how all the various pieces kind of fit into the mold. Um, to me, the HADR config gives you the best of both worlds. I can take this config even further by now uh, installing the VM agents inside of each individual VM. And I could actually go even a step further and start defining actual applications, which would allow me to either leverage the agents that we provide for Oracle, for DB2, for HANA, for Postgres, or I could go ahead and use my own scripts in an actual custom agent. So I'll probably proceed with that, possibly do another recording, but I just kind of wanted to give you the gist. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for listening. 
feel free to give us feedback, and I hope to uh, see you in an upcoming recording. Thanks.